Danny Maguire's really one the main character in the book and he idolises his older brother and when he's about 14 or 15 years old his older brother is murdered by the SAS in an ambush and there's lots of rumour at the time that, that one of his best friends, one of his older brother Sean Maguire's best friends, Let McFarlane, who was supposed to be driving a car or driving the car that Sean was murdered in, it didn't show up that night. So there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, speculation as to who who set his brother up, and and this kind of radicalises Danny Maguire. He becomes a he becomes a killer in his pursuit of who it was that murdered his brother. Well, Northern I've been travelling to Northern Ireland since the kind of mid early to mid 80s and I remember going into Belfast town centre when they had the big barricades up and you were searched going in and, and you had to go through security gates and there were patrols driving up and down the streets and soldiers walking up and down with, with guns and a lot of my friends that live in, in, in London are from uh, Belfast and Newry and they've all got the same background as me, they all were brought up in the same kind of way as I was and kind of working class background and the only difference was that they had soldiers running around their streets and I was, I was kind of always, I used to watch the news and, and, and I could understand the event they were talking about but I had no idea as to why it had come about and what had, where we got to that had caused this event. Um, and so the world that this book takes place in is set back then when there were all those kind of added tensions of not just the kind of sectarianism and the terrorism and whatnot, but but just the day-to-day -day process of getting around was hampered by security patrols and, and soldiers with road, uh, at roadblocks. If you read anything about Northern Ireland or the political situation going on between uh, Northern Ireland and Great Britain, uh, th there was so much disinformation and misinformation being fed through the media to us. And that was one of the things that got me interested in, in, in setting that, making that as the backdrop, because the, any book you read on it, it, it just says about how the you know, there's a famous one where uh, Margaret Thatcher stood up in Parliament and said, you know, we will not talk to terrorists. And at the same time, there was a thing called the Mountain Climber Initiative going on where there was high-level talks going on with, you know, the Republicans and stuff like that. So um, it, it, it seemed like a great place to, to set a kind of dark, noirish thriller. Yeah, the greedy, the needy, and the criminally insane. It, 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 as you say, it was. It, it's it's spoken from a, one Republican to another, um, but it, it could apply to any of the characters in the book because one of the one of the things that I, I used to love reading Char reading Charles Dickens, and I, at one point I read like two or three in a row, and I, I sort of started to get the the structure of what he was doing, where he would have a, <clears throat> a character at the beginning of the book that was kind of fairly minor, but really well drawn, uh, who would, you know, play a, like Magwitch or whatever, who plays a big part at the end of the book. And and I wanted all the characters in the book, like everyone to ha be uh, as if they were the main character. So it wasn't just a like sketch of someone who comes in and walks out. So everyone got their own, their own kind of detail. And even there's a guy sitting in a bar and, and um, like a little truck stop cafe in Tuscaloosa, you know, who's got jail tats and, and he gets his own kind of, he gets his own moment, you know. Um, and all of them have got something sort of slightly, I don't think there's one character in it that's kind of normal. Marie probably is the most, the closest to it, but even, you know, even she has her issues. <laughs> so. You know, she 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 accepts a, a guy who's just shot someone dead in a bar and comes to her house that night, and she kind of welcomes him in and has a, a curry with him. You know, and ends up going in the run with him. I think he, <clears throat> it, it's it, it, it's not the act of a normal person, really. So I think all of the characters I, I kind of hoped had a little, were slightly askance, really.
Um, well, Thriller with an Emotional Heart came, because I'm a big crime fiction reader and I, when I go on holiday that's usually what I take with me. But I've, all, the, all the books I've read, and there probably are writers out there that do it, but I've just never found them really, where I, I, there's a moment in the book that makes me cry or there's a moment that, that you know really gets me emotionally. I always love the joyride and the thrill um, that goes along with these kind of books, but the one thing that I found in the books that I've been reading that was missing was that kind of emotional heart and that's so with 70 times 7 that's what I wanted to try and get uh, I thought if I can make people cry throughout this book at some point then I'll have, I'll have a, you know for me done something slightly different with a, the, you know the crime genre